as we're now into the early days of February, pre-season testing is only just around the corner, with plenty of things of interest to take place over pre-season. But in today's preview of pre-season testing, we focus on the big three teams Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull. One team is focusing on keeping their spot as top dog. One is looking to finally win a title for the first time in 11 years. And the other one has a new and important relationship starting with Honda. But how exactly does their pre-season testing need to go? And what needs to be achieved? The only way to find out is in this video. First off we start with the Silver Arrows who had another successful season. As Lewis Hamilton won the Drivers' Championship as Mercedes won the Constructors. But the gap between them and Ferrari is still closing. So they need to continue their good work if they're going to continue to beat Ferrari. But what exactly do they need to work on during testing to set up another great season? First off they need to continue developing the innovative wheel hub system which was something they brought to the car after the summer break in 2018 and it did really help Mercedes against Ferrari in the second half of 2018. For example at Monza because Lewis Hamilton had better tyre wear because of this wheel hub innovation he was able to pass Kimi Raikkonen late on in that Grand Prix and it also helped at tracks like Singapore and Abu Dhabi where they also took a victory. But why do they have to keep developing this? Well for one it did help the performance of the car so they have to keep developing it. But also because Red Bull and Ferrari are going to start bringing their versions of this wheel hub innovation. So if they do keep developing it they will have an advantage over Ferrari and Red Bull when it comes to that area of the car. Another thing they have to work on is the performance of the car in slow speed corners. Because this has been a weakness of the Mercedes car in the last couple years. Notably compared to Ferrari who in the last couple years have had a very good car in the slow corners. And Red Bull also have good slow corner speed. And if you notice back in 2018 whenever we went to a track with slow speed corners say like Bahrain. Mercedes were always struggling more than Ferrari. But once we went to a faster track say like Russia or Suzuka. Mercedes now had clearly the fastest car. So if they can improve a bit when it comes to slow corner speed that will make their aerodynamics and their performance very good. And it is something that in my opinion has to be worked on. And the last thing they have to work on is improving the power output of their engine compared to Ferrari. As we all know during 2018 Ferrari had the best power unit over Mercedes. And that did at plenty of races give Ferrari a pace advantage compared to Mercedes. Now I know Mercedes still won both titles but they do have to improve when it comes to that area. Because as we all know between 2014 and 2017 Mercedes had the best power unit. And they cannot afford to be further behind Ferrari when it comes to the power unit side. Because compared to Ferrari if they don't improve that. There will be races in 2019 where it does cost them a lot. So they need to at least get on Ferrari's level when it comes to that. In a perfect world for Mercedes if they improve in all of these three things then they're going to dominate Formula 1 in 2019. But obviously I don't expect all of these areas to be improved upon. But if they do improve these areas of the car they could be winning the drivers and constructors once again. And their rivals are certainly hoping they don't do that. But now let's move on to Ferrari. Who have a new driver lineup this season of Sebastian Vettel and Charles Leclerc. And the teammate pairing of Vettel and Leclerc is going to be the most interesting of 2019 for sure. But the drivers of course need a complying car if they're both going to contend for the world championship. So what do Ferrari need to work on to make that possible? First off they have to have Vettel and Leclerc very confident early on in the Ferrari car. Because well for one Sebastian Vettel did not end 2018 that confidently. And if it becomes apparent in the first couple days of testing that the Ferrari car is very very good. Then his confidence is going to go through the roof. And it also will with Charles Leclerc. But not only do they need to do that for the confidence of the drivers. They need to do that for the confidence of the team. Because also the team at the end of 2018 was not that confident. So again if the car is looking good the whole team's confidence will go through the roof. 
Hopefully for Ferrari, they can get some early confidence going in that team. They also need to try and find out in pre-season testing if they still do have the best power unit on the grid. Because back in 2018 at certain races, that did give Ferrari an advantage over their rivals. At races like Bahrain, Canada, Silverstone and Spa. So if they can maintain the gap they have at least in terms of having the best power unit on the grid. Or even pull away when it comes to that then that is going to be another massive positive for Ferrari going forward. And it will come in very handy if they do start to pull away when it comes to how much power they do have. And the last thing they need to work on is seeing how the aerodynamics on the car are performing. Because remember, in the last few races of 2018, certain developments on the Ferrari car didn't work. And some of the aero pieces on the Ferrari car were not doing what they were supposed to be doing. So they need to find out how certain aerodynamic pieces on their car are working and make sure during pre-season work out how certain developments on the car work because they will for sure be bringing new upgrades as pre-season testing goes on. They need to make sure to understand these areas and make sure they are confident when it comes to these areas of the car because it was something that cost them at certain points of 2018. But I think it's safe to say that Ferrari coming out of 2018 were not confident at all. But now it's a new year and we do have some new rules. So during pre-season Ferrari have to start building that confidence again. Because if they do get the car right success could finally be coming back to Ferrari. Last of all though in this video is Red Bull. Who after splitting up with old engine supplier Renault at the end of 2018. They now have a new partnership with Honda for 2019 and beyond. And they need to work on plenty of things during pre-season testing. Certainly more than Mercedes and Ferrari have to. So let's see what they do have to work on. What they first need to work on is understanding how the Honda engine works inside the Red Bull car. Because as we all know the Red Bull chassis is very tight. Especially when it comes to the rear end of the car. But back in 2018, basically Red Bull came out and said that if Honda do not want a tight chassis, that Red Bull will try to quote, make it fit. Now that does sound good, but as we know, Adrian Newey does like to push the boundaries when it comes to how tight the car is. And he won't want to give away certain bits of performance. So if the Red Bull chassis is a bit tight, they have to hope that the Honda power unit is working properly. And also understand how it works within the Red Bull chassis as well. For example, things like the power delivery out of slow corners, aka the drivability. Because learning things like that during pre-season is going to be very important for them in 2019. Because then if there are any issues, they know where they need to improve and where they don't. So hopefully during testing they can gain some kind of understanding. They also need to find reliability as early as possible, but in a realistic time frame. Of course, in testing, Red Bull and Honda are hoping that the power unit is very reliable, or say more reliable than they were expecting. But when it comes to their expectations of reliability from the new power unit, they have to be realistic. Because remember, this is a new partnership, it's not going to work straight away. I can guarantee you on the first day the Red Bull car will break down at least twice. Because it's a new partnership and they are still learning. But if say at the end of the first test they can start to find some sort of reliability. And then have a very successful second test when it comes to reliability. Then realistically that is good for both Red Bull and Honda. Because again, they're not going to be reliable as soon as they come out of the pit lane on day one. So they do have to be patient, unlike McLaren back in 2017, for example. And that's why that season McLaren and Honda were such a failure. It's because McLaren basically in the first test were expecting great reliability from Honda. But realistically, that was not going to happen. Now I know pre-season for McLaren in 2017 with Honda was a disaster. But I do think the pressure that McLaren were putting on Honda was a bit too much. And it did definitely affect things during testing back in 2017. So Red Bull do have to be patient as testing goes on. And they also need to find overall speed again though in a realistic time frame. 
and everything I just said when it comes to reliability and when to expect it, the same basically goes for overall speed and finding that. They have to be patient but also don't expect the car to be instantly fast. I know 8 days of testing doesn't sound a lot, but given the amount of hours they pound around the circuit to Catalonia, they have plenty of time to find both reliability and speed. The first test really is about reliability. And then the second test for Redborn Honda should be about finding speed. That is if everything does go to plan. But as we know of Honda, things tend to not go to plan. So in the second test, they still might be having to find reliability. But even if that happens, if they can get at least two days of testing where they actually test the speed of the car, to see stuff like how quick it is and how they can improve. But no matter when, during testing they have to try and test out how quick the car is. Because if pre-season testing for Red Bull is all about reliability, then for pretty much the first 3 or 4 races at least in 2019 they're going to be on the back foot compared to Mercedes and Ferrari. And might even be closer to Renault in terms of speed and reliability if they don't get things right. Even though in 2019 I don't think Renault are going to beat Red Bull. So hopefully for Redborn Honda, especially Honda, things can go well. Because if they want to have any type of success in 2019 or have more success compared to 2018, then it absolutely has to go well. But for these three teams in pre-season testing, it's going to be very interesting to see how they all get on. For Mercedes and Ferrari, it's about finding out who does between those two have the quicker car. And for Red Bull, it's about having a great first few days with their new partner, Honda. So hopefully for these three teams, they can achieve exactly what they want to. So we can see them all fighting at the top in 2019. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I'll be back on Thursday with a reveal of Haas' new livery. Also, don't forget to join my Discord server, link below in the description. Also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what do you think Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull have to do for pre-season testing. But until next time guys, it's been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.